very happy to begin. So my talk is going to be uh, self-moving oil droplets, which I have been working for uh, a few years, and try to make a link between my experiment with the uh, with origin life uh, problem. Uh, let me uh, briefly introduce my uh, my background. Uh, my background is uh, artificial life. So artificial life. Um, some of you may know here uh, from this one. So it's um, uh, basically try to understand life by making an uh, artificial system, which is started in 1987. So artificial life is, is classified into uh, three different categories. One is self-free self production. How to understand self-free production? Why? It's one of the, uh, the main topic in artificial life. And second one is how to make an evolutionary system which is also have been done in computer simulations. And the third one is a robot. So how to make a safe moving robot uh, entity is uh, the third criteria. And people have been studying all these uh, stuff um, for the last 20 years, but it's also starting from 15. So uh, sorry, this is um, starting from the cyber thing. So it's my, uh, my personal uh, note so as you see here, so um, those three are, are categories is corresponding to these uh, branches. It's going uh, top to bottom, right? So this one is uh, how the people have been studying self reproduction, right? Starting from phenomenon. Because phenomenon is first one of the first person says that self reproduction is one of the an important characteristic of the living system, right? And the second one is Alan uh, uh, Turing. Alan Turing is, of course, also interested in self reproduction, but he's also interested in how to make evolutionary systems. And these are the uh, followers of Alan Turing, you know, down to say uh, that Kunika never gave up uh, talks about how to understand evolutionary systems, but it's also he's been using um, Alan Turing formers to understand how the evolution proceeds from the Cantorian. Uh, yeah, this is the FNS. And the third one is a uh, uh, robotics uh, study, uh, starting from Gray Water in 1949. He made an uh, uh, interesting uh, how to robot, which is play around the spray that do nothing but just you know, move around. This kind of stuff is uh, the, uh, one of the first robotic studies, and since then, people have been studying it. Bradley Bell and Jordan Clark. Uh, Roots. And by the uh, end, there's uh, doing this bunch of interesting robotics works that came, came out. Right? So it's, it's some, something is coincident with, uh, sorry, it was 50s, 60s, and 70s, we have a, uh, the game of life, and also the Stuart Hoffman um, uh, proposed uh, self, uh, sorry, um, this, this um, um, the autonomous network, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, then, 1980, there was a, a, the pre uh study in artificial life, and also spread the on, and then made the four worlds, and also the Francisco Barriman and Matrana gave an interesting theory, a philosophical uh, investig investigation on this living system. Then, boom, there's the artificial life. It, so, Tom Ray and other uh, interesting people came out and tried to understand the living systems with by making artificial shift systems. Not just making a, you know, a cell system, but it's making a robot or making a computer program or making some other uh, chemical reactions to, to mimic a living system. So. Then, <clears throat> just I'll give you one uh, example of, of how you can make a robot. So this is a sound like seeking robot I'm, I'm now working with my, my students. Um, this one, it try to seek uh, light and also the sound and the body, right? But uh, without no internal neurons, it's just a plastic connection between sensors. So kind of, kind of my idea is that, you know, uh, dynamic is not within the robot, but because of the interaction with the environment, the robot can move around, right? That's, that's the idea. And then, for example, like this, this guy is a robot, you know, taking a video from, from the city. And there is that ball. So the first of all, robot is, doing sort of try and error. And then, then finally, he sort of uh, find out where, where the sound source is. 
and then he got brought into the throne. So this is what our people. So this is not a typical, but it's, it's, it's one of the examples of how the people are using robots to understand how our system, our autonomous motion emerges and to go towards the uh, source. So one of the messages here is that embodiment makes some difficult problems simpler. So uh, people think uh, if the computer program doesn't move around, doesn't have a body, that program usually becomes so complicated. So uh, it's, it's hopeless. But once you just, without thinking uh, in a complex way, just put in a robot, then that program becomes easier. So that's kind of the spirit that people keep working with. So as I said, the artificial life is a three categories, like I said, people are familiar with robots. But the, the, the problem is, you know, uh, in order to discuss this, uh, this problem, we need an individuality or the unit, right? So that's what uh, I'm going to talk about today. So this is so what central computer reproduces. Is we need a, a unit that central produces, right? And then what evolves? Is we need a, a kind of unit that evolves, right? And then we need a, a unit that moving around. So these are the robots. So uh, in order to understand uh, these three branches, we really want to understand what what is autopoiesis. Autopoiesis is something that maintains its own individuality and shows these three uh, interesting properties. Right. Um, probably you guys know uh, a bit about autopoiesis. Um, the autopoiesis is like um, the simple definition of autopoiesis is, is that a self-organization of it's circular as link between a uh, metabolic network and a mental end. I mean that there's a metabolic cycle is going on here. That the production of this metabolic cycle makes mm -hmm. membrane, right? And because of this membrane, the metabolic cycle works. So these are the chicken and egg program. So how these uh, metabolic cycles and a membrane is uh, inter internally together is uh, is how the old policy is. Uh, these are very much theoretical and philosophical arguments, but um, one of the guys called uh, Luis Luigi in, in uh, Peter Luis Luigi in, in Switzerland, and also Francisco Herrera, he's a, he's a philosopher, but he's a uh, chemist. And they elaborated the simple, chem simple, simple chemical uh, reactions to study all the places. And whether this is this all of the idea can be possible with uh, uh, simple chemical reactions or not. Then, um, but using simple surfactants with uh, um, SXL or sodium like this one, then makes uh, reverse nitrile uh, do, do the exactly what uh, Francisco Barrero wanted to have, right? So this uh, reverse nitrile uh, has a reaction inside, and then also uh, they try to maintain its membrane. And then also the interesting side effect is once you have this kind of system, uh, self reproduction can be obtained as a side effect. So you don't have to elaborate to make a, a self reproduction property, but a self reproduction can could come out as a side effect of all the systems. Also, uh, with other uh, people like uh, uh, Peter Wall, um, that, uh, and also the Wizard Group, I made a, a, a fatty acid base food, which uh, makes a tiny little uh, a base food, can also do the same thing. So the previous one was mice, but this one is the best. So viscous in a, a, a the size of like 200 nanometers can also have the autopoietic properties, right? And then quite recent, uh, Dr. Professor Sugawara in University of Tokyo group, they also made a gigantic uh, viscous, which can be uh, autopoietic systems, and also uh, producing in a, in a time scale of like this, after one minute long, Five minutes, they make uh, another best. Uh, so these, these are the, the uh, well, I think it's a, an example of, of how you can make uh, the real autopoietic system using chemical uh, components. Then, um, then I come to my uh, my theme. So how do I make uh, making a self moving autopoietic? So as I said, you know, uh, evolution, self reproduction, and then robotics are the three uh, main uh, branches in artificial life. But in order to understand these branches, we, we have to have an autopoetic unit somewhere, right? And then 
Once you have all the code, you need Do you think we can make a set moving uh, unit or something? Like we made a set regression properly, naturally, from all the whole code unit. So, uh, so I was interested in this one. I mean, studying a, main, a moving problem is interesting because it's, it's designed the way the system interacts with the world. Right? And also sensing the environment and making an action is inseparable from each other. This is sort of a Gibsonian idea of psychology that, you know, making action is also uh, making sensing for the environment. Also, making action is to organize the relationship between the system and the environment. So it's not just an independent something that is, is making an option, but it's more like a relationship between environment and system. And self-adjustment is what we call uh, self-organization of the making action. Yeah. This then, the primitive cognitive system appears when self-movement emerges. So these, these are the, 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 the reason why I'm interested in uh, self-movement. Because once you have a self-movement, you can have a, a primitive uh, and a minimal cognitive system in a pretty much uh, uh, a several level, or the chemical level. Right. And this is the sort of the automaton uh, evolution, well, the automaton simulation of the, how the autopilot entity can move around. I did it with this one with the case with Suzuki and then myself uh, four five years ago. So this is a, a simple chemical reaction. Like, um, um, L is for the link particle. When and then when L uh, First of all, when substrate, two of the substrates coming to the neighborhood of the catalyst, then they are making a link particle. And when there's a link particle uh, neighboring to each other, then they are linked together and they make a boundary. So therefore, the catalyst uh, is enclosed within the boundary. And then the reaction goes on and on and then try to uh, maintain the boundary. But at the same time, this guy is in the front. So this uh, simple cell automaton tells you that, you know, once you have a, a, a simple artificial, artificial chemistry, then you can have a autopoietic system, but at the same time, they can, maybe they can move around. But uh, one, we're not quite sure whether uh, this, is, this is possible in, in chemical system, as a real chemical system. Then we um, try to make a, um, a real one. But uh, my background is uh, uh, theoretical physics, and then I, I, I can't do experiments, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but because of the, the, the genius uh, chemist, uh, two of them, one is uh, Arlo Toyota from uh, Tokyo University, but now he's in University of Chiba, and then also uh, Martin Hanglitz. He's now in University of Southern Denmark, but he's from, from Harvard. Um, these two chemists have helped me to in sort of elaborate this idea of self moving uh, drug and how we can make it. How we can play with it. No, this one is so simple, so finally I can do it by myself. Uh, so I tell you what the, the chemical system is. Uh, the system is so simple. Um, first of all, you have to uh, use the oleic acid system. The pure uh, oleic and hydrogen is the oil part. And then the water part is like a, a high pH water. High pH is, is made by the soda. And the pH should be in between 11 and 12. That's the, the, that's the condition that I, that I know. Right? So uh, the oleic anhydride is, is the main part of the olive oil, so just brought to buy olive oil. And then put the soda in the water and then the olive oil. Then you can have it. But the problem is you have to have a pure system. Otherwise, you cannot have it. Right? So <laughs> it's a bunch of contamination in the, in the olive oil. But anyway, so this is a simple system that I'm working with, uh, with Martin and Carlo. And then, uh, I have to explain what the chemical reaction is about. This is the oleic acid hydrate. Uh, this uh, oleic acid molecule is, is, is connected with this chain. So when there's water, this is hydrolysis hydra hydra reaction is called um, cutting this uh, bands, and you can make a, a two of oleic acid. Right? And then oleic acid is in, in balance with the water. So the, the two protons is protonized, well, it's protonized. That is the uh, equilibrium phase. So in, in, in some graphic way, 
this is water, uh, this is uh, electron hydride. Interacting with each other, I mean, one product. This product is uh, oleic acid and then rain. So oleic, this green product, the oleic acid, is, is, uh, it, it, it's a surfactant, so they are the couple of the water, uh, the oil droplet, right? And the rest of it is just, you know, throw, throw it away. And what we do is uh, put the slide and then put uh, a dip here. So you just put water, or it's uh, pure, or it's an hydrate, you see how it So the usually, um, it goes to, to the very uh, sort of uh, non-interesting thing, right? <laughs> Maybe you play with the game of life and it's signing from the random state. But if you're lucky enough, sometimes you have some interesting problems. Behaviors. So this is the, the one of the first experiments that I did, and then I was lucky enough to uh, record in everything. Right? Means that I cannot replicate the same behavior. <laughs> so people say this is the beginner's luck. <laughs> um, so this is the uh, this the scale of this one is a few centimeters. Uh, this is the this part is a, a pure oleic and hydro, and the, in interaction with the water. So it's. So I didn't put the, the uh, glass slide, cover glass on top of it, so there's a closed structure because of this, uh, the surface tension. And then after a while, you can see So this is what I call uh, oil dropper. And so this is another uh, take. And you can see some other uh, droplets forming here, and also here. Mm -hmm. This one may not move around, but this guy is moving. So, so this is not. But this was this way. So this interesting population of, of droplets is emerging from here. Um, so sort of you know ecology of droplets. But uh, this is some of them are not never have been moving like this guy never moved. Like this guy. And it, as you see, some of them had some interesting uh, uh, trails, but some 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 of them is not having that doesn't have that trail. So there's different ways of moving around. So this is another uh, another picture. Um, this time I put some, you know, scales, of course. Yeah. So this is uh, 200 micrometers. And you see, it's 
gradually uh, it's, it's moving and you see a tool structure around it and also you can see some uh, internal uh, structures like uh, these chemicals are uh, moving to the leading part and this is the leading part and this is the test part so this flow, the inside flow is like this one <coughs> so these are all the information that we have so I have to guess what's the mechanism that this part can move around and then what is the, uh, the, the future possibility using this kind of stuff. Okay. So first of all, let's say that this uh, the wild experiment is important in the, in the sense that the environment of the droplet means that the nitrogen concentration of pH is a white and a white soil. And this one has more like a, a, a discrete coming, leading afterwards. And also, uh, this guy is, is frequently changing its direction. But this guy has some structure sticking out from the surface and some other uh, structures. So these are the interesting uh, index stuff. Because even if uh, the condition is almost the same, the behavior, the motion structure is different. So now we're moving on to how to, uh, how to how can I understand the behavior? But this one is the flow strip, the movement, how the droplet is moving up. This is a control droplet. So I put a nitrogen inside the drop, uh, the oil droplet. So then the reaction is rather suppressed. Uh, therefore, it's easier to maintain the structure and then we can make a close view of this, what happens here. And you see uh, the surface it is like a um, some membrane or flow is, you know, <coughs> so it's sort of unfolding the way that it, like, the behavior is, is, is also. And as you see, this is the, the convection, like I said, the com there is a convection flow when the droplet goes this way, the convection, will, convection flow falls in this direction. Then um, I, I try to make a phase diagram of why when we have a, uh, these droplet structures. So we change the concentration of oil in the solution and also control the pH. This green area, as you can see, a uh, chemical reaction is going on, right? So it's very reactive. So you can see, you can see the reaction is going on, right? Making some bubbles and stuff like that. But the reaction itself cannot make droplets move around. You have to have pH condition or some other thing. In this case, you have to have a, a enough oleate around surrounding the oil droplet. Also, you have to have a high pH. Then you can have a, a movement. So you, you can have a convection. So when the, the first form says yes, in their convection. Or when you have convection, and also you have a chemical reaction, then the droplet can move around. But the movement is different depending on how much oleate is within the solution. That shows the yes star means that there's a different movement. So these guys, no oleate in the solution, but pH 12, and it's pH 11 with the oleate equals the same, mean more uh, the same behavior. So now uh, we put a pH indicator within a droplet and see how the pH changes. So when you see this droplet moving around, and you can see some white swell uh, when the droplet is moving around. 
means that the soil has a lower pH compared with the, with the environment. And then white means that pH is lower than 7. Therefore, uh, the first of all, the environment looks like a pH 7 to 12, but the trail, a trail has a pH 7. And also, uh, this guy is departing from the lower pH. They are they, trapped by their own trail. That's what the memory effect within the environment. So the droplet, when they move around, they, they are sort of uh, spreading um, surfactant after they're moving around. Um, in, in, in the real side. Therefore, uh, this, this is accumulated within the environment. Then, because of this lower pH regions, the droplet can move free. And this effect is, is an interesting uh, effect to the droplet motion because once the droplet is, it is close to the lower pH, uh, the convection flow is the reverse. Then if they try to go away from the pH, lower pH. But when there's a high pH, then this guy it goes towards the pH. So there, therefore, there's a primitive chemical practice exists within the droplet. So I try to uh, analyze it, both my, um, my laboratory, the theoretical uh, uh, studies. So um, this is, uh, but it's not a model, but it's a numerical simulation of the, of the oil droplet. And well, those who are familiar with, uh, with these equations, this one is analytical equations. It's just uh, simply described how <coughs> uh, the flow structure is described. This is a two-dimensional um, incompressible world. Um, these are the U, vector U is the, the flow vector at the point X at time T. And the point is, uh, there's a, the, big, the force F is on the right hand side. Force F is a function of the chemical at the boundary. So when there's a more chemical, the, the force is, is proportional to the to the amount of the chemical there. Right? So this is the assumption. This is also taking into account the pH, lowering the pH, and then going up the surface. But when there's a hydrolyzation, when there's a chemical reaction goes on, the, the tension goes up, that's experimentally confirmed. And also, um, this is uh, the, the variable V, is the, the amount of the chemical. The amount of the chemical is affected by the flow structure. But at the same time, there's a, the reaction is going on. So the chemical is generated at the boundary and, and then diffuse, diffusing through the, through the space by this current. So, so basically, coupling this out, uh, flow structure is Obeying the rest of the equation, two dimensional incompressible water. <coughs> and this one is uh, the chemical reaction is, is affected by the flow. Also, we have a, a density matrix, a density function is also affected with the same schema. So, the, this one is try to uh, determine where, where the boundary is. It's, it's, it's a bit complicated, but uh, it's complicated as, you, as it is, right? But, uh, you know, this, this is the computer becomes a, a very fast, and like 10 years ago, we cannot do this, you know, with this one, but now we can do it in a real time. That's uh, the advantage of this, uh, using this the direct uh, numerical method. So first of all, we set up the initial condition, and then the density function is placed so that the boundary of the progress constitutes a circle, then calculate the interface forces using equation three. So this F is, is, is proportional to the chemical mass. Then solve the basic equations and then continuity equations to get um, flow structure and pressure of the data. Then we compute the uh, density function and then chemical to update. But then I, I just this time. So uh, we try to use the, the, the realistic parameters as well. But uh, this is the two dimensional. The real one is three dimensional. So this is. Uh, Davis's approximation. What we found with the numerical simulation is that when you have a, a two parts, it is all this thing. Okay. So this one is first of all starting from the random uh, chemical distribution. First of all, uh, this droplet has a four vertices, and two of them is selected, 
and then start to move around. So this is the first goal, the initial, initial here, the target state, then four processes appear, then two processes selected, then it's move around. So that's what happened. Uh, also interestingly, uh, this is how, how much distance uh, the droplet moves move from the initial state. And there are two peaks. One is never moving droplet, and this is moving droplet. So even if it looks like the same, depending on the initial uh, distribution of chemi chemical mass, came from us, um, the droplet can move or move not, that does not move. So this is controlled by the initial state. Also, the interesting thing is, uh, because this, this is a different computer, you can have a uh, with or without convection flow. So without convection, droplet moves slowly and then decays fast. But when there's convection flow, it moves fast and sustains a lot. Means that when there's a convection flow, it's coupling with the chemical reaction. This non equilibrium state, this reaction is maintained. So therefore, the droplet survives much longer than without convection flow. So I skip this. Then I change the droplet size. This is something um, in, the, in, the, in the new experiment, but uh, I put uh, 3, 5, 10, 20 microscopes, and then 30 and 50. And you can see that the behavior is, is, is changing from, from around this area and around this area. First of all, that was the size. It's more like spherical to a uh, boomerang like pattern. So it, it becomes more stable the motion is. But then it becomes like a set vibrating. So it, then again, it becomes unstable. Right? So uh, I calculated um, so the function of size, how much distance they can move from the initial point. And what's the uh, survival rate? Is the half? How about the lifespan? So lifespan is getting longer when we increase the size of the droplet. Also, we computed uh, autocorrelation function. And the autocorrelation function always say, shows uh, uh, linear uh, behavior. And when this is it completely linear, means that this is Brownian motion. But it's in between Brownian motion and in straight motion. Therefore, sometimes it's moving straight, but it's randomly moving, and then goes to another direction. And this is the stop goal interval uh, index. So this is how much, how frequently. Um, so, th so this, what, what I mean by stop goal interval is droplet is not moving constantly. They just go move, stop, move, stop. So I'm just uh, measuring uh, the interval of this uh, stop and go. Um, and, and took the histogram of how, how the system looks like, and then calculated the exponent. The exponent shows that in between this size, uh, exponent goes to uh, 1, means that around this one, the droplet is, is more likely to move uh, longer than the other regions. This is, is a way that you can see the luminous uh, motion. Right. So, some of my, um, my uh, uh, so this is what happens when you have a, a huge droplet. A huge droplet has a, a completely different uh, type of behavior comparing with the smaller ones. Um, first of all, they are moving slowly, less the smaller ones. But at a certain period of time, they They may accelerate a bit. <laughs> so, behavior is 
sometimes they um, do me in, like making some strange uh, some chorus like behavior and then right away. And then we don't know why, but uh, one reason is because when the drop size is getting bigger, uh, then trap extension is, is, is almost constant. And um, because of the Laplace question, um, the, the trap is easily modifiable. But also the, because the Reynolds number is proportional to the to the space scale, therefore it, 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 there's no uh, beautiful convection flow inside the structure, and it's easily uh, changing the boundary shape. That's what we we are thinking. And this one is another. This one is just very tough. Like this way. <laughs> so, um, so surface tension uh, balance is, is at this uh, side. It's sometimes um, allowed to decompose into small pieces, which is very unusual in the case of um, And interestingly, uh, what I should show here is that doing this numerical com computation, um, without about certain size, this droplet is, is break up. The pr and then when it's break up, the procedure itself is, is, is not correct. The procedure itself fails. You know. That is corresponding to whether this strange phenomenon is observed. So I, I can um, do it. How much time do I have now? About. Now? Okay. Initially, there is a simple uh, distribution by therefore drop it for this one. Yeah. And so this one is uh, the normal condition. But when we when I think this other side,
favorite book is, is written by Japanese about art form. form. The art form thing is, is, is pretty much a uh, to me because he says that art form is, is very uh, common and interesting guy. And then, but the complexity is coming from the interaction with the soil rather than the mineral structures inside the, inside the art form. So when you, when you want to understand how this living system understand what's the interaction between the environment and the art form itself. 